Good morning and welcome to worship here at Norwich United Church's online service on June 21st, 2020. I would like to take this opportunity to honor the First Nations people who lived in, on and cared for the lands on which we're presently worshiping. May we worship and live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. And now I invite you to come and prepare for worship. Come. Now is the time for worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Now is the time to praise your God just as you are. Come. Let's pray. On the first day you began the work of creating us, God, as on the first day you raised your firstborn son from the dead. So on this first day, O Lord, freshen and remake us, and as the week is new, let our lives begin anew again, because of Jesus who shows us your loving power. Amen. Now if we had gathered together, we would have been offering our, our sh sharing our joys and concerns right now. And well, we do have some birthdays we're celebrating this week in our congregation. Allison and Alexa Leach and Marilyn Robillard are all having birthdays on Tuesday. So if you see them or you want to pick up the phone, drop a message, let them know that we're thinking of them and wish them a very happy birthday. Willa Wilson is thrilled to share with us that her granddaughter Emily Crombes has been recognized as the first Canadian woman pilot to crew a forest fire fighting aircraft. Uh, there was a stamp released in her honor on uh, Friday, June 19th. So check your envelopes. You'll see it soon. We are extending our prayers too to Ursula and her family as Ursula's mother passed away last Monday and we're want to extend our condolences and, and heartfelt relations for her and her family at this time. And now, Matthew's got a moment, minute for mission for us. So under the hope that this thing is in fact filming, hi everyone, it's Matthew Jones, I'm here today to read your minute for mission. Many of the Plains, Dakota, and Nakota peoples have a sacred connection to the horse. For them, the horse holds immense cultural and spiritual significance, and its energy is a powerful catalyst for change. The spirit of the horse was certainly present among indigenous youth from Plains Pespetry in the Saskatchewan Conference during the Equine Assisted Learning EAL program at Cartier Farms in Spruce Homes, Saskatchewan, a healing fund project that's also supported by mission and service. Ten young men participate in the week-long leadership program in July 2018. The tools and strategies the EAL facilitators and traditional knowledge keepers used would help the young men grow into strong indigenous adults. By interacting with these incredible animals, the young men brought innovation, strength, and energy to everything they did at the farm. Despite the injustices that indigenous youth face every day, the skills these young people took home helped them understand their place in the circle of life and equipped them with the inner resources to strengthen it. The EAL program acknowledges the need to support young people as they deal with difficulties in life stemming from systemic racism and intergenerational trauma. For indigenous youth, the trauma from colonial oppression continues to reverberate powerfully in their lives and circumstances. The impact from the Indian residential school system and other colonial practices is still felt today. The EAL program is a place for indigenous youth to begin the healing. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your faith. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. Thank you for listening today. 
part of our Father's Day celebrations and worship today, I'm going to be sharing with you as prayers uh, a few of the poems written by my father in his book, uh, Poetry by Me for Thee. This prayer is titled, If Only. Let us pray. Praise be, praise be, Christ the Lord died for me. Born to us on Christmas Day, and for us to be the way. Gentle but mild, yet he was strong. He leads us back to where we belong. He shares his kindness from above to give us all everlasting love. So when things go wrong, we turn to him because we know through him we'll win. Yet we ask for the strangest of things and never look for what he brings. We've turned him away more than enough, yet he always takes us back when times get tough. Why he does, only he will know, and his love he'll always show. So guide us, Lord, as we pray, to find the path back to your way. And keep us there, for we know you can, so we can be with the Son of Man. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning... Our first scripture reading comes from the book of John, chapter 16, verse 25 to 32. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figures of speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe you came from God. Our second reading comes from Romans chapter 8. Verses 12 to 17. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children are then heirs, heirs of God, fellow heirs with Christ, provided that we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Here ends our readings. Thanks be to God. Now, Elizabeth has a special treat for us this morning. She's going to play This Is God's Wondrous World, Voices United 296. It's in the public domain. Uh, if you have your hymn book at home, you can sing along.
Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for guiding us and teaching us. Thank you for all those who stand in the position of father around us. Whether they have children or not, they've given us what we need to become fuller people in your kingdom. Please lead us and teach, speak to our hearts and let us hear what we need to hear from you this day. Amen. In the United Church, we find many names to praise and address our Holy One. We name aspects of the divine that we can relate to, such as creator, protector, teacher, guide, light, shepherd, and loving parent. In the scriptures, Jesus frequently relates to God as his father, calling God Abba, which is daddy in Ar Aramaic, and telling parables portraying God as a father. I think I most relate most to God as a parent because of the living examples my parents were for me, but even more so today because now I'm a parent myself. And these days, it's hard to be a parent. I imagine it's particularly difficult to be a father. Being father doesn't just mean going to work and earning a paycheck and disciplining when order is disturbed anymore. It's expected to be so much more interactive and hands-on with one's children. And right now, with the kids home 24-7, we're all under a microscope. Every dad is a role model whether he wants the job or not. We all know that fathers influence us greatly, either for good or for ill. Many of us haven't had a father who knew how to be physically or emotionally present in our lives. Some children grow up vowing they will never be like their fathers. They spend their whole lives reacting against them. Some of us are blessed to have other figures in our lives who provide that physical and emotional support we need. And still others among us never knew a father of any kind. Many among us have fathers who are no longer with us and are very sensitive to their absence on, on days like today. This makes celebrating a day for fathers difficult. But as Christians, we can claim God as a good adoptive father. The kind of father who will never leave us or forsake us who is always listening for our call. A father who loves us and gives us good gifts. Billy Graham is quoted as having said, a good father is one of the most unsung, unpraised, and unnoticed, yet most valuable assets in our society. My desk calendar says, today as we honor our earthly fathers, let us remember to honor our heavenly father. It's been eight and a half years since my father went to join the Heavenly Father. My father related to and relied on God as a loving father figure in his life. So today I would like to honor and recognize both my fathers by sharing with you three of the many things in my relationship with my dad that form part of my relationship with God. I hope it will be a relatable message of hope and encouragement to us all even those of us without children, but particularly to those with father figures in our lives. My dad wasn't a perfect father, but he tried. He knew he had father issues. He was a more uh, do as I say, not what I do and do it now kind of guy. However, kids may hear what our parents tell us, but we learn mostly from watching what they do. The first thing I learned from watching my dad is that people and relationships matter. God made each of us, each and every one of us, unique and calls us by name and loves us. God sent Jesus to be God with us, to meet us where we are and help us to accept forgiveness and restore the divine relationship. Jesus would stop on the roadside and listen to and heal the people he met there. Shopping trips took forever because my dad would stop and chat with all and sundry. I remember my dad learning sign language so he could converse with a lonely deaf person at the place where he worked. He told me he once learned Spanish to be able to read letters for a friend who could no longer see. 
and he'd pop over to our wheelchair-bound neighbor's place any time she called for help. And later on, Dad made special time during our visits for spending time with my autistic son. When Dad passed, Matthew only wanted to know who would explain things to him now so that he could understand them. And my dad often told me, if you've met one person, be they red, brown, yellow, black, white, purple, green, blue, or pink with polka dots, you've only met one person. God created them as he created you. Look to see God in them, and you will find God looking back. The next thing I learned about relating to God from my dad was that church mattered. God had created the earth as a home for all creation and created us to be in it. God gave his only son so we could be family. We celebrated the Sabbath as an Easter people on the first day of the week. Dad insisted we remember the Sabbath and keep it holy by dedicating at least one hour every Sunday in a service of worship even when we were camping. It was a house rule. As long as we lived under my parents' roof, we had to attend worship in a place and denomination of our own choosing. But we had to attend worship. It applied not just to my siblings and I, but all those who sought shelter in our home over the years. We got to know the people in various places as well as our home congregation. and We had our differences from time to time, but they became our family through God's love. We wore our best, sang our best, and listened our best, because God had given his best. How could we offer God anything less in return? When we were given our dollar allowance, we were obliged to give 25 cents to support our Sunday school, because learning God's word and way were very important. Lastly, I learned that God has a plan. We don't always like it, but he has a plan for us. Dad would not have chosen a life battling the roller coaster ride that is living with diabetes. From early childhood, he saw himself as a shield, a protector of the weak. Diabetes kept him from the military, but it gifted me with siblings and 37 years of his presence. He was active in community service and made a difference in the lives of a lot of people. He was active in church life, the PTA, supported my girl guides, and our couldn't even win the consolation round soccer team. <laughs> even after he lost his leg to complications and suffered multiple heart attacks waiting for a kidney transplant, he mentored others in their struggles with diabetes, dialysis, and many medical issues. Jesus wouldn't have chosen the cross if there had been another way to restore the relationship between God and creation. My dad would have laid down his life following Christ's example too, but he came to believe that God had other plans for him. And finally, Dad left this life, trusting the promise his Father in Heaven made to never leave him or forsake him. However we choose to honor and celebrate our relationships, today and every day, God is with us, walking beside us on the path ahead. However we choose to name our relationship with the Divine, mother, father, or something other, God is with us, guiding us and providing for our needs, and teaching us. If our hearts and hands and minds are open to the blessing, let's open ourselves and trust our relationship with God as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now I would like to invite you to look inside yourselves. To look inside at all the gifts of the spirit and the skill and knowledge and talent and more that God has created within you. Count those blessings. Name them each. And now look outside of you. 
Look at your home and those you live with, your neighbors, next door neighbors, down the road neighbors, in the next town neighbors. Consider your local businesses and the essential and frontline workers. Think about their needs, particularly during this difficult time. Is there something you can give or do that would make a difference for them? A kind word, a prayer, a phone chat, a friendly wave? In your heart, write down what you offer to God and place it here in this basket and offer it. If you wish to support the Ministry of Norwich United Church financially, I invite you to contact the church's phone. Uh, website, their Facebook page, or to call the church office, and Linda will be happy to help you. While we're considering our gifts to God this morning, Elizabeth will play Joyful, Joyful, Lord, We Adore Thee, Voices United 232. Let us pray. This prayer is titled, Thank You. Thank you, God, for the simple things. Thank you for the joys that your love brings. Thank you for your gift of love. Thank you for your Son from above. Thank you for your gentle grace. Thank you for your Son taking my place. Thank you for sparing me the pain. Thank you for forgiving me my shame. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer. Thank you for letting me know you're there. Thank you for the Son of Man. Thank you for the fulfillment of your plan. Thank you, Lord, for each blessed gift, and thank you for each gentle lift. Yes, thank you, Lord, for the simple things, and thank you for the joy that your love brings. Amen. And now we're moving to the close of our service. I would like to offer a blessing in the form of a prayer and, your, and a benediction. This poem is called A Prayer. Let's pray. Lord, answer us as we pray to overcome our troubles on this day, to keep us all from going astray, and protect and guide us in your way. Amen. And now may the Christ that walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. And may the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. And may the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your heart to love. And may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>